Hey everyone, today I have a quick little concept video for you. I want to show you how to use this custom CSS field, which is a fairly recent update to Shopify. Some of you may not even have seen this yet. You'll see this if you update your theme to the latest version. Otherwise, if you got your theme sometime in 2023, you should probably be seeing this already. And this field allows you to add custom CSS to your theme in an easy way, much easier than it was previously. So previously, if you wanted to add CSS to your theme to like customize something that isn't available through the settings, then you would need to go into your, um, you know, your code editor in your theme. You would need to figure out which file you were going to change. Um, look for the CSS files. You would either go into base CSS and, you know, add code to the bottom of this file or you might create a new file like custom CSS as I've shown in a different video. And this method might still be useful to you if you have a lot of CSS changes to make. You, you might still want to create a separate file and I'll also link to the video where I explain that. If you don't have a huge amount of changes you want to make. You just want to change the color of something, the font size or the, or the font family of something, then this field is perfect because it avoids a couple of huge problems with uh, the previous method. The first problem was that when you make code changes to your theme in Shopify, then you may not be able to update your theme. And I've talked about updating your Shopify theme in a different video. I'll link that video as well. But as you can see here, we have Dawn version 10 available and I'm able to automatically update that using uh, this button here, right? It, it adds the theme to your library and it moves all your settings across. That's the amazing thing about these automatic theme updates. You won't need to set up your settings again. You won't need to set up your colors and everything from scratch because it moves them across. The problem is that your code changes don't move across. So if you made code changes somewhere here, they won't be moved across. And even sometimes if you made too many code changes in your theme, you won't have the automatic update available at all. So I hope you see where I'm going here. This custom CSS field, technically it's part of the settings, right? It's part of the settings. And so it's saved as your settings and it's moved across when you update your theme. It's a great way to keep your theme updatable and maintainable. The second huge advantage of this field here is that it keeps your styles scoped, okay? Uh, what this means is that it doesn't affect anything other than this one section that we're editing, as it says here, right? So I, I went into the product information section, which is like this main top part of a product page. And so I'm editing the custom CSS here. And whatever I do, it's only going to affect this, right? It's not going to affect the rest of the page. It's not going to affect other things on the site. And that's often the most dangerous thing in CSS. If you're someone who's like new to CSS, not exactly a professional developer, then the mistake that you could sometimes make is, you know, breaking your website or making something else look weird, something that you did not intend to change. That being said, if you don't want to make changes for a specific section, but rather for the entire store, then you can find the custom CSS field under your global theme settings as well. CSS you right here will affect the entire store. But okay, enough talk. Let's actually get to the point and I'll show you how to use this. I'm going to assume that you have some really basic knowledge of CSS. Basically how CSS is written, I'll do a small recap, is that you have a selector, right? And then you have these curly braces and you write your rule in here, okay? And your selector, this targets the element that you're trying to edit. So if I wanted to edit the heading here, then my selector would be like H1 or something like that, right? Um, if I wanted to edit the description, then what do I do? I need to know what, what this HTML element is, right? And I could take a guess. I could guess that it's like a paragraph. Yeah. I mean, it's a paragraph, but also other things might be a paragraph, might be using the paragraph element like this. So it's better not to use the actual HTML paragraph element or the HTML H1 element. Um, rather, you want to use classes. If you don't know what classes are, and actually, if you have never written a line of CSS or HTML in your life, then I highly recommend watching my previous video, which was an introduction to HTML, CSS, and other languages that are used in Shopify. It's like an absolute beginner introduction to writing CSS and stuff. And I explain what classes are there. So definitely check that out. 
But basically here I am on my product page and I'm going to open up the Chrome Inspector by right clicking and clicking inspect pretty much anywhere. Then I'll click this arrow sign and um, I'll hover over and see what's on my page, right? And what classes they're using. So here I'm hovering over the paragraph itself, but I want the actual like product description container if I can get it. And yes, so here's the actual div product underscore underscore description. And that is a much better way to target this product description. If I wanted to change, you know, the font size, the color, the font family or anything like that, I would use this product description class to target it. So I'm back in here and I'm going to use dot to target a class and then product underscore underscore description. And now we're safely targeting the product description, no other paragraphs, you know, this was in a paragraph as well. We're not targeting that. We're targeting just the product description. And let's do something more realistic. Let's say I want the font size to be like kind of larger, right? So that's a change that you could make. Let me show you another example, something that maybe isn't so simple as targeting a paragraph or like a heading, right? Um, let's say that we want to make the header um, a different color, right? And I look into my header section here and I see that I have an option of only five different colors and they're taken from my color scheme that I set up in theme settings, right? But what if I don't want to use one of these colors? What if I want to use a different one? Um, cause these ones aren't very suitable. Then I go down here and I see that, oh, luckily I have the custom CSS field available. And again, I need to target my header, right? I need to target this actual element. I need to figure out what this is. And here it's not as simple as, you know, what I showed you earlier, where you could target a paragraph or something, even though I don't recommend that or target a heading here, we actually, we do need to know the class. And so again, let's just inspect, just open the inspector by clicking anywhere on the page um, and then use this arrow, hover, hover over what you want to target, right? And if you've never seen this really, the green is padding, so that's, that's inside the element. If you see orange or something, that's outside of the element. Um, but the green is fine, that means that if we change the background on this element, this green part would, would also be colored. And so this is fine. This is the element that we want. It is an element called header. The class is also header. Um, so we could have guessed that, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, always better to check. So I'm going to simply target the class of header in here, dot header. And then we open curly braces and we go with background color. I really like that we have autocomplete here. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. Um, and let's make it FC, 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 which is a, like a light gray, which I like the look of. Okay. So I hope everything makes sense so far, but you might be wondering, how do I know what to write here? Well, I mean, I guess that's part of just knowing CSS, right? The autocomplete will help you a lot. So if you type color, you know, this is the text color. If you type, um, you know, font, dash and it'll give you suggestions like font family, font size, but it'll also give you heaps of suggestions that we actually never use. Like, I don't even know what some of these are. Um, and I'm a developer, you know, so you do need to like know a little bit of CSS to use it, but I recommend simply Googling these things. Once you know what you want to do, like that's the most important thing. You have to know what you want to do and then you can Google, how do I change the font? you know, in CSS. And you know, in fact, you can even use ChatGPT for this. I'm not joking. I know there's a lot of hype about ChatGPT and people are over it, but I actually do use it sometimes. And as you can see here, we have font family, Arial sans serif. That's the basic way that you change the font in CSS. It's called font family. If you want to change, you know, the font size, it's called font size and so on. Um, but let me show you how to change the font family here. And let's say again, that we want to do this on the product description. Okay. What if I'm using a different font for the heading and for the body and the description by default is using body text. Whereas maybe for some reason I want it to use the heading text. In fact, let me change this to something more obvious. So we're going to make the headings a serif. Okay. 
So now the headings are a serif and our body is like this. And maybe I want the description, you know, just the description, not the rest of the body text across my site, not the bottom text. Definitely, I want to keep this uh, sans serif, like this font, but maybe I want the description to be in this font. So going back to this custom CSS field here, I'm going to write font family. And then what do I write? Well, the name of that font was serif. So that could actually work. Let me just see. Yes, that did work. Sometimes you need to put it inside quotation marks like this. Sometimes it works like this. But actually, I don't recommend doing this. I don't recommend using the actual name of the font. Because if we go here again, and we change it to mono. Okay, we change our heading fonts to mono. And we want this to change as well along with the heading fonts. Well, it's not going to because we just hard coded serif into the CSS, right? Um, and so instead, here's what I recommend you do. There's something called CSS variables. And this is getting maybe a little bit advanced. But let's take a look at this. I'm going to inspect it. And I'm going to look at the font family. And we see that it's actually using a variable called font heading family. Um, and this is something that especially Dawn theme, but other Shopify themes are doing a lot as well. Whenever you make a setting somewhere here, so we change this, the heading font to something, they create a new CSS variable. And then that variable is saved. And as serif, right, that variable is saved as serif, and it's used throughout the site. What that means is that we can basically just use this variable, we're just going to take this, in fact, the entire thing, we're just inspecting the heading, right? We're looking at the font family declaration here. And we're just going to copy that entire thing, we can use our themes CSS variables in our own CSS as well, if we want it to be, you know, in line with what the rest of the theme is doing. So let's save that. And let's take a look now at what happens when I change this heading font to mono, then that's also going to change to mono. You understand? So rather than hard coding the font here, I just used a CSS variable that says always use whatever our heading font is. And if you inspect your theme enough, you will find many other CSS variables being used. Um, you know, they're all over the place here. This is for positioning, you can kind of ignore this. But the useful ones might be color, for example. So here, if your buttons are this color in your settings, then any other buttons that you may be styling, you will also want to use this variable so that it stays the same color as like the buttons. So it stays tied to your theme settings, if that makes sense. And if that doesn't make sense, then don't worry, because I know I got a little bit advanced right now. And you don't really need to use variables that much. I think that's all for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want me to talk more about CSS variables, let me know. But yeah, I hope you found that helpful. The last thing that I want to say is I just wrote an ebook, a little bit of promotion right now, a beginner's guide to Shopify coding, I teach you the basics of HTML, CSS and Shopify liquid, I talk about the Shopify theme architecture, the folder structure of a Shopify theme, and also where you can start coding. So like this video today was just this part 3.2 using the custom CSS field. But don't worry, the book is not that long. It's written in a very concise way, so that you can use it kind of as a reference like a dictionary, whenever you want to do something with your store, you can open up this book and check you can of course read it from beginning to end if you enjoy reading and it'll give you a great foundation for modifying your Shopify store. But anyway, definitely check out my book if you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoy my Shopify coding videos, in general, then you will love this book. The link will be in the description. So that's all for today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck and see you in the next video.